Hey everybody, how are we doing? Uh, it's Eric here at Learn Max, and I decided I had to make good on my uh, threat that you could use this uh, Minute and Synth or Synth and a Minute uh, project to actually do some wobbled bass. But I kind of cheated here, sorry, I apologize. I used the old auto filter redux trick, uh, which you've probably seen in some of my other demos and tutorials. So I'm going to turn that off and actually focus on what uh, we came here to hear about. Um, so what I added tonight uh, is presets. So there's a way to save your settings and recall presets. So I got a couple of presets saved here. Uh, nothing too exciting, but you'll notice I'm using this little preset object here, and I have a read and write button. So I can uh, read a file or write a file full of presets. Um, so let's take a look inside to see what's kind of going on there. You see, uh, as I click buttons, uh, all my dials and everything are changing and snapping to whatever uh, thing they're supposed to be. And the way that this preset object works is basically you hold down the shift key, uh, you, you make some settings, uh, say, change that around, and change my FM a little bit, maybe I'll turn that to sine wave. Uh, let's see what I got going on here, uh, turn up that. And I hold down the shift key and I, click one of my presets, and that becomes the preset. If I just click on it, it recalls the last one. Right? Okay. So let's open up our patcher, take a look at what's going on inside. Uh, you can see that I kind of uh, messed around a little bit with the layout here just to kind of make things a little uh, cooler. And uh, now what it's doing, it pops up. I have it set to, uh, on load bang, it wants to read my preset file. So it's looking for this uh, this file here. I happen to just call it master. Uh, JSON. Uh, you could name it just about anything. The JSON is uh, the kind of the convention for uh, uh, preset files that uh, Max uses. So anyway, all right, so we're in here. You can see our preset object, and I'm going to pop us out of patching mode, or excuse me, into patching mode. And uh, so here's the bulk of it. Uh, right here is, is kind of all there is to, to do. There's a couple of uh, fancy things I'll talk about in a minute, but first I want to just talk about what's going on here. Um, you'll see if I type preset, is my little preset object, uh, and it's got rows, uh, you know, a little matrix of my preset buttons. Um, I can store or recall presets. I, if I pass in store and a number, it stores it to that one. If I pass in just a plain number, it'll recall that. And it has some uh, some outputs here to say uh, which objects are stored or which aren't stored. So that they exclude and include, and I'm including everything in here. Um, so I don't need to set that up. And uh, I don't need to listen to that. You know, this is, this is kind of the most basic forward thing, sort of. Okay, so now that would be a regular preset, but I'm actually using, if we look here in the inspector object, you scroll down, you see this patter storage. Patter storage, uh, the whole patter system is, was a relatively a, a newer addition than the original presets, and it makes life a lot easier. Uh, you used to be able to just use the preset object, or you still can just use the preset object on its own, but what patter storage does is a much more elaborate system, and you can save uh, the settings of you know, sub-objects or, or you know, sub-patchers and b-patchers and all that. It makes life a lot easier. Uh, I was trying to set up one uh, for demonstration purposes that only used the uh, preset object, and I uh, just drive myself crazy. So I fell back to using the, the the pattern storage here. So you'll see I have these two objects here, and this is kind of really the bulk of what's going on. Uh, Auto pattern uh, basically says uh, I want to store everything that's in, within this patch, and I'm going to use the auto name option. So it's going to name. Uh, you know, come up with a name that's used in the file for all of the user interface objects automatically for me. I don't have to go through and name things. Now, the trick was in here, remember we were using these B patchers over here? So let me open up one of those B patchers. So let's open the original. You'll see in here, when I pop out of patching mode, I also have an auto patter in there and using the at auto name one. And that's important, have it in auto name. So this way I don't have to go through and name them. And also since I have multiple instances of my B patcher, those, you know, those two envelope uh, controls, one for uh, the filter and one for the amplitude, 
uh, it's going to take care of uh, making sure that there's no conflicts and things in there automatically for me. So I'll go ahead and close that. So there's one of those in here. There's going to be one of those in there. And you remember how I made sure that all of my sub objects in my poly object inside here, if I look inside my poly object, I don't have any user interface elements. And that's good. So I don't have to worry about storage in there, right? Everything is really, my user interface objects are all really up at this level. So this is where I need to have my uh, auto patter. So um, that's really kind of the bulk of it. So patter storage, um, this is is really the, the, the meat and potatoes. I, I think I may have said that before, but auto patter basically uh, wants to put everything into, you have one patter storage object, and it's gonna be called FM synth. So that's gonna have, this is basically where everything gets stored in this uh, patter object. And I can give it a message to read or write. Uh, and on a load, it'll, uh, when it first loads up, I try to get it to read an object or read a file, and it'll prompt me, you know, what file do you want me to read? Or if I click write, it'll, what file do you want me to write? So this way, everything, uh, when that message, when those messages go through, it automatically will uh, prompt you for a file or, and it'll write everything out. Piece of cake. It all works. It's really nice. Uh, so definitely check out the patter system inside of max MSP. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. And this way you can get back to your, uh, back to your patches and you know, it, it acts more like a, a real professional soft synth. Okay. So I hope you had a good evening. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, it's a real quick one. Um, got a whole bunch of things going on. Uh, happy patching. Oh, don't forget, uh, rate and subscribe.